As promised, I came back with another video explaining how to shoot the film profiles in terms of exposure, color temperature, and color filter. Also how to install the creative film LUTs to get the same kind of look. So I also made some updates to the film profiles to give you even more pleasing colors and just finished the Eterna High Fidelity profile, which a couple weeks ago I published a tweaked version of it but now I'm gonna publish the high fidelity one which is about 95% the same with the Fuji that's in a simulation. So now it will be much easier to color match these two camera brands or just get better color out of the Sony camera. Uh, also working on a new classic chrome, Kodachrome 64 from Fujifilm and we'll post a video about that in the following weeks. So let's get started. This video is shot on Fuji 400 and the first profile that has been modified is actually Vectro 100. The only modification brought to this profile is a decrease in the black point which was lowered to minus 15 to actually just increase the contrast. Uh, next on the list is the Fuji 400. So I changed the black level to plus 3, knee to 80% plus 1. And the biggest modification is the reduction of saturation to plus 5, which actually is not even a modification because in the original video there was a typo which said it was at plus 15, but actually it was always only at plus 5, so I'm sorry for that. The next profile is Portrait 800. So initially the Portrait 800 was made to give you a candy look, but uh, nowadays I'm using this profile for commercial work. So I was looking for something a little bit more natural, neutral, you know. So the first modification is I've changed the black gamma to narrow, plus 7. I brought down the saturation just a little bit to plus 20. Uh, color phase, you can set it to either 0 or minus 2. And for the color depth, it's going to be red, plus 3, uh, green, plus 5, blue, plus 4, cyan, minus 4. Uh, magenta minus 3 and yellow minus 3. So the last profile that I've modified is the Kodak Gold one. Set the black level from 15 to minus 10 because I feel like it's just maybe a little bit too contrasty. Uh, the black gamma set it to white and minus 7. And also I've changed the color mode from S Gamma 3 to S Gamma Simple because I noticed how S Gamma 3 actually shifts some, some parts of the yellow spectrum towards magenta and that sometimes can give some weird hues in the skin tones, mostly when you're overexposed. So uh, just choosing S Gamma will uh, eliminate that problem because it has overall more even uh, yellow tones and that's exactly what I want for Kodak Gold. Okay, so now that we're done with the modifications, uh, let's see how we can shoot these profiles to uh, get similar results. So initially I made these profiles for myself, uh, but after I saw how well they came out, I just really wanted to share them with everybody else. So with that in mind, uh, my style is just a little bit more moody, darker, you know, with a typical color scheme so you know my some people might say like uh, all of my shots are underexposed or my skin toes are not accurate and yeah you're right they're not accurate because it's not supposed to be you know if I would be shooting commercial work yeah I would be shooting differently but right now I'm trying to achieve something more artistically like a film look so as a general guide I usually Besides Portrait 800, which I overexpose by one or two stops, uh, with the rest of the profiles I usually tend to underexpose uh, by half a stop, one stop. Sometimes if I want something more drastic or if I'm doing street photography and I'm working with silhouettes and a lot of contrasty, you know, dark scenes, then I'm, I might even uh, underexpose three stops, four stops, you know, five stops, depending what how harsh I want the, light, the lighting to be. So. Um, as for color temperature, I usually just stay away from the correct color temperature. So for example, if you shoot daytime, you usually want to go for 5500. But if you want something more artistic, like uh, if you're shooting film profiles, you might want to go 1000, 2000 under or above the normal temperature. Uh, for the color filter, this is, this is very subjective and depending what colors you have in the scene, and want what you want to emphasize also on the profile but um, most of the times I think the safest suggestion would be just to go cyan green so probably something like C3 
uh, G1.5 in the color filter, that would probably give you the best results in any situation. But I will still give you a uh, general guides for each profile uh, so you can find it easier to start working with these profiles. <laughs> But I will still give you general guides or suggestions for each profile individually so you find it easier to start working with them. The first profile is Vector100. Usually I go for a cyanish uh, green look, so uh, somewhere around uh, C2, G2, something like that would be fine with me. Uh, nighttime I usually shoot 3900 or 4200. Uh, with a super yellow filter giving it a warm look but it can also go super warm uh, daytime or nighttime so uh, you can go let's say 2000 Kelvin above normal and then emphasize maybe a little bit more with some yellow filter or red filter so maybe go something like uh, let's say I don't know uh, A3, A4 and uh, or it can go A3 and G4 to give more of a yellow look uh, the next profile is an light. With this profile, I usually go a little bit colder, so maybe 500, uh, 500, 1000 Kelvin below, and then I just emphasize more by going into the color filter and uh, shifting everything towards magenta, magenta or red. You know, you can go both ways. Uh, again, these are only suggestions. You can just experiment any way in any direction that you want, but these are my personal most used uh, settings so you can use them as a base start. Uh, next profile is Fuji 400. This actually works well in both colder and warmer tones so go for a cyan green look or sometimes just lift up the Kelvin by 500 or 1000 and that should work fine but this is a super versatile uh, profile so you can underexpose it, overexpose it yeah, and you can use uh, you know the temperature in both ways, colder tones or warmer tones. So just play play around with it, okay? The next profile, uh, which is Picture Profile Four, is actually set to Classic Chrome. This profile is still under development, but from what I've been experimenting, it works really well with warmer tones. So usually, uh, at the moment, I will shoot correct temperature or above with 500 to 1000 Kelvin, and then just uh, emphasize more on the magenta tones, on, on the pink tones, by shifting the color filter uh, towards magenta. Probably something like M2 or something like that. Next profile is EVE Pro Plus. It's a versatile profile, but usually I shoot colder with this profile. Uh, so maybe try going 2000 Kelvin below normal with a green tint. So uh, just drag the color filter towards green, maybe G2 or something like that. That's my personal preference, but you know, it's a pretty versatile profile again, like most of them. So just go experiment with it and you know, try different colors. Ektar 100, I usually uh, shoot it either really really cold and with a green tint just like uh, EVE Pro Plus where I go super hot super warm because it has this saturated like super soft contrast and I really like to usually daytime I like to go maybe a little bit warmer than usual 1000 to 2000 Kelvin above normal and uh, from there I just you know depending what kind of colors I have in, in the scene I just uh, emphasize more on the yellow tones or on the uh, red magenta tones as you noticed until now I most of the times I just go somewhere around cyan green or uh, Red magenta because those are my favorites. So next profile is portrait 800 again This is a versatile profile, but I usually don't shoot it at different uh, Temperature than the correct one. So let's say if it's daytime I I shoot it 5500 because I like to have the full spectrum of color. I usually use it to further color grade, but you can also use it uh, with more uh, creative stuff, just like I did in my last video of Cine Steel 800T look. So just maybe go below 2500 Kelvin to get a super uh, blue tint and then just color grade from there depending what you want, but this is a really beautiful profile because it can give you really nice skin tones and natural colors and super soft gradations, you know, and with this variation of the profile, you will get less uh, chromatic uh, noise 
which is just wonderful so just try it out uh, I think it's it's just wonderful for anybody even if you shoot 10 bit just use it because uh, it will just save you so much time in color grading. The next profile is Kodak Gold. Definitely go hot with this profile. This is the only way that I do. Uh, this is the only way that I, I use it. I just go hot. 1000, 2000, maybe 3000 Kelvin above normal. You can also emphasize by going towards red in the color filter, uh, towards yellow or magenta. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It gives you really good results. So on picture profile 9, it's uh, it's Sony Eterna Simulation, the high fidelity one. So not the last from my last video. This is the high fidelity one, which is 90 to 95% uh, accurate to the Fuji film simulation. I haven't tested too much with this profile, but you can try any of the above and let us know in the comments if you find any other interesting settings. Uh, the last profile is Blue Velvet, uh, definitely I'm going nostalgic with this one. So I'm gonna take it to Magenta Blue to accentuate the natural earthy tones, but with the Kelvin I will usually raise it just a little bit, maybe 200, maybe 500, maximum 1000 Kelvin above normal, and then just kind of like drag the color filter down towards blue until I feel it's right. Yeah, you can also go into the extremes if you want uh, a more artistic look. Definitely nothing wrong with that. Uh, just try to feel the mood and what colors the scene is looking for or asking for. So guys, these are only suggestions, not golden rules, not at all golden rules. Uh, and even rules are made to be broken because otherwise nothing great would be created. So, you know, I'm, try I'm just trying to offer you a base start. Uh, for these film profiles so you can start shooting, you know, to have fun with them because many people ask me How do I shoot this? How do you expose? How do you use the temperature? Whatever to get the same kind of color. So this is it, you know, like uh, This is how I usually do it, but don't limit yourself inside the rules Just try to experiment, you know, with color and with exposing and just try to feel your gut You know, that's what it's about. I'm never thinking like I'm not following rules usually, I'm not thinking like, oh, I usually do this or I usually do that. No, I'm just looking at the scene and I'm kind of trying to feel my gut, like what colors I should emphasize, how should I expose, you know, because sometimes I overexpose, sometimes I underexpose. So you don't need to follow these rules like they are made of gold. Yeah, um, currently I'm working on a classic Chrome or Kodak Chrome 64 profile and we'll be releasing that in the following weeks together with the high fidelity Fujifilm Eterna profile. So subscribe to see that video coming up. Let me Also let me know in the comments if if you want any film profiles or what film stock you, you would like me to uh, simulate. I will check into that if it's possible I will make it. So let's see. And it's just wonderful how Sony has given us so much control over the final image inside of the camera. And pretty much no other brand is doing this, you know, like Fuji is doing something, but they won't let you actually control the luma values of the colors. And, you know, you don't have as many color modes as Sony. Also, you know, the, the overall picture profile has a little bit more control than uh, Fuji. Also, Fuji has some controls that, you know, Sony doesn't have but what I'm trying to say like most camera brands don't offer this and uh, you know, it's great but I still feel like there is some improvement that can be brought to these uh, systems to make them even more appealing more better you know like help the user create more beautiful images so it would be just amazing if we could just uh, adjust individual color hues and saturations inside of the camera this way we could match different camera brands and create more complex profiles uh, for any kind of situations and that would be just much more fun you know like not everybody uh, you know likes color grading or you know not everybody wants to be a colorist so you know it would be just amazing to create more interesting profiles so this would be a game changer for Sony color so please Sony if you watch this if you're watching this just you know consider doing this this would be amazing for the user um, besides the color filter you can also use the creative film LUTs to push things even further so let's jump into DaVinci to see how we can do that the ones that are working in DaVinci can buy the power grades which actually give you full control over the effects and can further enhance inside the note panel. Uh, in DaVinci Resolve, install the LUTs by making multiple power grade folders, uh, import the files into each folder separately. 
add new nodes by pressing Alt S on Windows and then just choose the one that you like, drag and drop onto each node a different effect. I usually go as first node, base LUT, second node, film contrast, third node, classic film color, and the last node is red halation. Remember, the power grades from DaVinci are fully customizable so you can actually have full control over the image and you can add your own modifications. In this pack, I prepared over 30 different contrast gammas and over 40 color schemes which results in more than 1,000 unique variations, which is pretty crazy, right? Also snuck in the exact same LUTs I have used in the original video for each profile, plus one extra. So yeah, have fun experimenting, you definitely have a lot to experiment with. Like and share if you appreciate this content, subscribe if you want to see the classic Chrome film recipe coming up, and support the channel by buying the creative LUTs or buy me a coffee. Till next time, have fun and see you later.